with the news that came out last night that Blake Snell is officially a San Francisco Giant. The question becomes, where do the Yankees pivot from here? What's going on guys? It's the King of 161st Street and welcome back to King's Speech. Let's get right into it. There are two options in the Yankees organization right now that will be taking up that fifth slot in the starting rotation until Garrett Cole gets back. I'm going to be going over both options and letting you know which one I believe is the better option of the two. Has Scott Boris lost his edge this offseason? Right now, let's just get right into it. Starting with that topic, has Scott Boris lost his edge? Blake Snell has just signed for two years, $62 million with an opt out after year one, which is 31 million guaranteed each year. Everyone knew after the Cody Bellinger deal that this is the type of deal that everyone in the Boris Corp was going to be getting. A one year opt out deal, the AAV that they wanted. Scott Boris is going to tell you, yeah, this is fine, right? We're going to come back to the drawing board next year and the money's going to be there that time. Just think about this. Two of the guys who have signed out of the three went to San Francisco. Both of them costed only $118 million. Two of the players that signed off of Boris Corp had career years or at least resurgent years. With Blake Snell, that was a career year last year. There's only one other year you could say that's possibly better, but it's one of the best years of his career. With Cody Bellinger, had three years of looking like a ghost of his former MVP self. And finally, last year, was able to put it all together and sort of create a form of that MVP self. If they're not able to get their money then, what makes you think that coming back and having a little bit less of a year like that? Because who's expecting them to continue to have career years? Cody Bellinger just had, like I said, three years of not looking himself. It's a real question whether he can keep that up, which is probably why he didn't get the money he wanted. Blake Snell has a history of winning a Cy Young and then coming back and being mediocre. That's probably why he didn't get the money he wanted. What makes you think that coming back and having, let's say with Blake Snell, he has a three ERA, 3.1, still has his walks issues, continues to have the same sort of tendencies he had this year with a little bit less of an ERA, with a little bit less consistency. What makes you think people are gonna come to the table then and say, here's, here's the money? What makes you think that if Cody Bellinger goes back to the ghost of his former self, what makes you think he's gonna get money? Money. Again, they are banking on both of those guys and even Matt Chapman, who started off last year on fire and then sort of came down to earth, which is probably why he didn't get the money he was looking for. What makes people think that players are going to do something to one up? what they did last year other than Matt Chapman I think Matt Chapman can improve on what he did last year but mainly the top two guys what makes people think that they are going to one up what they just did because that's the only way they get any sort of money that they're asking for most likely scenario all three of these guys have to accept their player option for next year and then hope that teams get desperate two years from now but right now it's not looking good for scott boris the owners are starting to catch on to his shit are starting to say no and that's a scary thing for a guy like scott boris who's always had a stranglehold on this on this league he got a rod paid he got he's gotten so many guys and he's finally finding a brick wall how does he pivot from here i don't see how you pivot from here anyways those are my thoughts on the deals specifically how does blake snell help the giants the giants have had an have had a busy offseason they just went out and signed jung hu lee they signed jorge soler they signed blake snell like i said matt chapman a multitude of others i'm not going to go through the whole list but either way no matter what it is here I don't think Matt Chapman, Blake Snell, Jorge Soler, Jung Hu Lee, I don't think that puts them too high of, in too much of contention with the Diamondbacks or, or the Dodgers, obviously. These deals are just because the Dodgers have been in on the marquee free agent every single season. They were in on Aaron Judge. They were in on Carlos Correa. And finally, they were able to get two of the marquee free agents. And it actually worked out for them because they got them on a discount. This still doesn't put them over the edge in that NL West. And if you look at the NL as a whole, they're going to have an uphill battle making a wild card spot. I think that they could sneak in at that three wild card spot. But to me, this isn't a needle pusher. This is them seeing one of the top talents and saying, we need some identity here. 
We need someone to rally around. We need players to rally around. They got Jung Hoo Lee, who they could rally around in the outfield. You have now Matt Chapman and Blake Snell, who are both guys who are respected in the league that their fan base could actually get excited for. This is what they needed. They needed a spark to that Sam to that Giants team. Over the last couple years, you haven't had much to get excited about. This is finally a free agency period where you have players to get excited about if you're San Francisco. But overall, it doesn't fully affect what the postseason will most likely look like. It doesn't really affect where they will go. I think this will give them a few more wins, but it's not going to push them over that edge. That's the real point here. Anyways, it's been a good offseason for San Francisco, not on the level of a team like LA, and they still don't have the team that Arizona projects to have next year. Let's get into where the Yankees come in in all of this because they were in at one point on Blake Snell. They actually offered him $150 million and he declined. And now he got $90 million left. Where do the Yankees pivot from here? Because now with Garrett Cole out till around June-ish, not really having a fifth starter, you're going to need someone to step up. And there are two guys who are in the organization right now, probably going to be the opening day number five starter. That would be Luis Heal or Clayton Beater. I'm going to start with Luis Heal. He has impressed me the most, and I think he's the guy that will win this spot. But here is why. Last season, he was recovering from Tommy John, was not able to pitch. 2022 didn't look good, but that's when he got injured. 2021 is where you really need to look. He showed a lot of potential. He was going at some of the top hitters in baseball and having success. This is a guy who has major league experience and has success at the major league level. This is a guy like I brought up in my video before. I'm not going to go through everything about him, but the fact that he does have a four to five pitch mix, he has a 99 mile an hour fastball. He's able to locate. You watch those spring training games. He's able to pinpoint those up and in fastball. He's able to pinpoint his pitches. It creates a dynamic presence on the mound that even a guy like Clark Schmidt can't even replicate. I believe Luis Heal has some of the biggest potential in the entire Yankee organization at that starting pitcher spot. Yes, even above Chase Hampton or Will Warren. I think Luis Heal could be a guy that could step up and be the best among the rest. There's a reason why the Yankees did not want to add him in the Juan Soto trade. The Juan Soto trade had Randy Vasquez, had Michael King, had a ton of prospect. It didn't have Luis Heal because they see something in him, the same thing that I see. He has that it factor. It's hard to describe, but you can see it obviously. This is a guy who can definitely affect a game positively over the course of his season can definitely even win that number five spot when Cole gets back over a guy like Clark Schmidt and put Clark Schmidt in the bullpen probably where he belongs. That's just a side note. I am heavily impressed with what I've seen out of Luis Heal. Thing is, he's having a ton of success here in spring training, a place where he probably should be having a lot of success if he's going to make this roster. Those are the reasons why I think Luis Heal will make this roster but let's go through with Clayton Beater. Beater was a part of the Joey Gallo trade. He came over in the one one to one with LA. He was their number 15 prospect right now. He is the Yankees number 14 prospect, I believe. And he has kind of a guy who people expect to be in that rotation. And I just don't see the full potential there. Look, does he have good stuff? Yes. He's very inconsistent. Right now in spring training, having a 3.46 ERA, it's not terrible but it's also not great through 11 innings. You kind of just wonder, what about him is that it factor? What about him? He seems like he's a jack of all trades, master of none. While on the other hand, Luis Heal seems like the guy definitely, you could see, has that insane fastball that he could pair with a very serviceable breaking pitch. That's not a jack of all trades. That's a guy who has a mastered pitch. I don't see a mastered pitch out of Clayton Beater. Because of that, I don't see the full potential there of him being able to consistently get out at the major league level. Now, I haven't seen many of his outings. I'm going to be completely upfront with you. I haven't seen many of his outings in spring training. But from what I have seen, he doesn't look too special 
available to me. If it were me, I think I would go with Luis Hill. Luis Hill has the experience, like I said before. Having a pitch that he has almost mastered is definitely a sign of being able to get out at the major league level. The problem that we have at times is that we don't have guys, guys who can flame throw. You have the Rodons of the world who used to be able to get up into the upper 90s. Now he's sort of living in the mid 90s. He's looking better with that velocity. He's not really hitting like 97, 98. Nestor Cortez is in the low 90s. Clark Schmidt is more mid 90s. Garrett Cole is a guy who could hit the upper 90s and he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Luis Heel is able to hit 99 with ease. That's a key factor here the fact that he can control the fastball at 99 to me gives him an x factor that clayton beater probably won't ever have and to me that is the difference maker but let me know down below what do you guys think do you think that Luis heel will make that starting rotation or do you think clayton beater's the right guy or do you think it's a guy like chase hampton or will warren we have a bunch of guys in the system so let me know down below what you guys think in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of King's Speech. Once the season starts, I'm going to most likely do Monday episodes of King's Speech to go over the weekend series. So get used to this. If you enjoyed, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new. It helps a ton. Comment below your thoughts and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care and peace.